absolutely hate all of this. It has no place in a professional establishment. Is it necessary? No. And inside, Alex finds Terry's collections hard to bear. He's got so much of everything. There's china figurines, there's odd Victorian plates, pottery, tea sets, um, Victorian portrait miniatures, and the inexplicable addition of lots of furry koala bears. The general effect is pretty underwhelming. To find out more about the challenge ahead, Alex will spend the night. Just in room one here. Lovely. Okay. Thank you. The Milton Lodge has ten ensuite bedrooms, with prices ranging from between sixty-five and one hundred and twenty pounds per night. Thank you. Bathroom just to the right. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. You. One room key. See you later. See you later. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Gosh, it's a long time since I was in such a floral room. It's a shame, because the room's got really nice proportions, but they're certainly not being made the most of. And the floral pattern continues next door. This is an interesting decorative technique, and one that I'm not entirely sure works here. Let's just layer pattern upon pattern upon pattern upon pattern. I mean, the whole effect completely blows your mind. How could you ever sleep in here? Ah! Once again, this room is very flowery. It's like someone's dream of femininity. And these duvets don't match at all, and this horrible sofa. Most of the people that come here, um, they come in and they say, hell, this is going like back going into another world. And you, you couldn't change it. You can't change this place. It's got Stay as it is. Oh, that is very pink. And it's the kind of pink that you're only going to like if you're a little girl under the age of four. It obviously doesn't match. Why bother? Hoping for some improvement downstairs, Alex explores the function room. This looks like a village hall. There's this collection of very disparate stuff. Just doesn't hang together. And it's a lovely sized room and surely has a million uses. But who's going to use it with it decorated like this? With Joe and Terry responsible for the front of house, Alex takes them both on a tour of the problems she's discovered so far. This is the most amazingly light and lovely, pretty room. I can't understand why then you have a kind of duvet that completely clashes with the wallpaper. I think that if you're going to do the Victoriana thing of wallpapering, then everything else has to be a bit plainer to suit modern tastes a bit more. Does that make sense? Well, to you it does, it's obvious. Well, does it to you? No, not really. So why not? So what do you suggest doing with this room? I think the duvet. Change the duvet, walk into the room and see what this wallpaper looks like with this, and actually it looks much smarter immediately. The bathroom doesn't tickle the hotel inspector's fancy either. And I know pink is the theme, but was this really necessary? This is for gay people, this room. We fit the gays here because they like pink. And they, just, <laughs> they do, believe it or not, they like pink. <laughs> this room is supposed to have a sea view. Nah. There's no sea view here. Maybe I'm mistaken. I'm not quite sure what a glitter ball adds to it, I have to say. Let's try the bed. Ooh, this is very boingy. Basically, for 15 quid a night, you expect a kind of hostel, don't you? You don't expect this. This is perfectly acceptable. Hmm. This is slightly less glamorous and more what I imagine the rest of the hotel look like. It certainly doesn't look like it's been 
done up recently, does it? A few cleaning issues already discovered. First impression is very good, but scratch the surface and I'm already starting to see a few problems. The Bonnington Beach has 21 ensuite rooms, all priced at just £15 per person per night. As well as a complimentary tea tray, each room has a disco ball and an assortment of pillow humbugs. What on earth is the significance of the glitter balls? I mean, is it supposed to add a little glamour to the room? I just don't like it. Finishing touches that I've implemented in the hotel, um, I hope aren't too odd, just a personal touch. There are some glitter balls and I know clients do like them because sometimes they take them as a souvenir. Is that a tea towel? Rather pathetic attempt at art on the walls. You know, why would you spend money on a picture frame and then fill it with a cut up tea towel? This <laughs> is a sweet, if slightly inadequate attempt to add a little luxury, I imagine. You're selling a 15 pound room. You don't need to give any frills and furbelows. Let them go out and buy their own bloody sweets for 15 quid a night. <laughs> the sweets were probably my add-on. Um, we used to have biscuits too. <laughs> Family room. <laughs> OK, so explain this to me. This is a kind of, like, half cover. And this is a proper cover and then some beds have no cover at all. I might have gone a little cushion and throw crazy. I was just trying to brighten the rooms up, really, and add a personal touch. Why? It just doesn't make any kind of sense to me. It's kind of style over substance. I should say style in quotation marks, shouldn't I, really? All these bits are just here for decorative purposes, and as this isn't a home store showroom, I just don't see the point of it. My conclusion so far is that they obviously have those beds there because there's a demand for lots of beds in a room. Stack them high, sell them cheap is obviously their attitude. Um, and in other ways, there seems to be kind of money wasted on, on items which I just can't comprehend the function of. How on earth do they manage to make money on 15 pounds a night? With questions about the Bonningtons' profit-making potential, Alex goes in search of hotel manager Nick. <sighs> Nick! Hi, Hiya. I'm Alex Polizzi. Hi, Nick, nice to meet you. Really Hiya. nice to meet you. Thank you for inviting me here. No problem. I've had a look around some of the rooms upstairs, right. and um, some of them seem to have lots of beds in, so I'm wondering what your clientele is. Basically, the weekends it's stags and yeah. hens, and uh, contractors during the week. Another question for you Disco balls. <laughs> I mean, honestly, darling. Have you been in room 24? If you turn the light up to the glitter ball, draw the curtains, the whole room spins round with stars. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it was a double bed in there. Bit of romance. People like it, don't they? With his balls not to Alex's taste, Nick takes the hotel inspector to his favourite room in the Bonington, which he styled personally. Gosh! Well, what do you call this room, then? This is the party room. Aha! Where we take big groups of guys or girls. Or Just call it the orgy room. <laughs> Be honest. <laughs> right, let's have a look. <laughs> How the hell do you explain this wallpaper? I did this whole room up while Susan was having, just before she had the baby, and I chose all the wallpaper in here. All and the actually, wallpaper? All the wallpaper, I ripped out all the cupboards, had it made open plan, I put the plasma on the wall, and she really liked it when she came in. I hope you don't expect applause from me. The whole room is completely blank. You don't have a headboard. You don't have any kind of decorative detail apart from this really over-the-top wallpaper. I, I mean, it's, it's bonkers. Crooked. People love this room. As soon as they but walk in, they go, wow. Is the wall... Oh, please. It is, it is. They go, wow. We're obviously communicating in different languages to each other. While his party room may be a guest favourite, the underused downstairs lounge is more of a party pooper. Why is it so cold in here? Because we haven't got any heating in here. We've got the plumbing, but we haven't got the radiators. Why? Because I think they're about 1,500 quid each, the radiators. How much did you spend on this floor? 
about 15 grand. You spend 15 grand on a floor in a hotel that only charges 15 pounds per person per night. Yeah. I'm going to have a tough time with you. Nick and Susan spent £130,000 creating the lounge and breakfast room in their budget hotel, including £15,000 alone on the bespoke flooring. It may not have impressed the hotel inspector, but Nick has one more card up his sleeve that he's certain will win him big plaudits. It'd be very interesting for me if you can show me the patterns of your occupancy. Yeah. Yeah? We run 100% every night apart from Sunday. Not throughout the year? Yeah, throughout the year. Okay. The only day we don't feel Sunday. Okay, so tonight, Four. out of 21 rooms, you... Everyone. So, if you're already at 100% occupancy, yeah. you'd have to put up your prices or shave your margins. Or have more rooms. Oh, please, for God's sake, you're a stock raving bonkers. No, no. Yeah, and then get another mortgage. No, 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 and, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm not saying that, I'm saying... Darling, work, with what, you bedrooms, work with what you've got. If this room was bedrooms... You know, then you still have to give them breakfast somewhere. Yeah, that's true. In achieving a 100% occupancy rate, Nick's realised every hotelier's dream. But as he's not willing to budge on his budget rate of £15 a night, Alex is facing an even bigger challenge than she anticipated. What is the point of being open at £15 per person per night unless he can show me that it makes money? Can Alex beat the budget hotel into submission? Nick is just so unmotivated to make any changes at all. Some of what she said made good sense. A lot of our other bits are shit. <laughs> <laughs> Not only is there a fluorescent sign, which is a big no-no in my book, but half the tubes have blown. The attention to detail here is obviously lacking. There's dead leaves and cigarette butts all over the frontage. And all in all, it just looks unkept and pretty unappealing. To find out why the hotel is failing, Alex will stay the night. Welcome, Alex. Hello. Thank you so much for inviting me. A pleasure. Let me show you around. Thank you. Please follow me. Hotel manager Chris is keen to make a good first impression. This is our restaurant. Uh, we have the upper level, the lower level, and in total we can cater for up to around 140 people seated. I love all the brickwork and everything. Very different from what you expect when you arrive at the outside. The family use the downstairs area for functions and parties. But despite the unique decor, the furniture fails to rouse a cheer from the hotel inspector. The floor's gorgeous. Thank you very much. Uh, the all... furniture's awful. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the colour thing. You've got a blue floor. Mm -hmm. Why would you have red chairs? But Chris is confident the upstairs will be more to Alex's taste. The Madonna has 12 ensuite rooms, priced from £55 a night. For his special guest, Chris has reserved his recently refurbished room, 208. Thank you. Welcome to your room. Your bag. Anything I need to know? Your key. Thank you. You have access at any time. If you need anything dull, 200, and we'll be downstairs. OK, fantastic. Okay. Thanks, Great. darling. You're very welcome. See you in a minute. Take care. Right. Well, let's start with the obvious things. I like the purple wall, unusually, and I quite like the art. Everything else in the room is irredeemably ugly. Look at that, too. Cover off the box. <laughs> Why is there a runner here? I mean, am I losing my mind? I mean, is it hiding something? Oh, yes, it is. The style is pretty simple. Uh, a few trimmings with our ceramics incorporated in the rooms. I'm not too sure what Alex is going to think of, but we'll see. <laughs> Look at that! Look at that decorative detail on this awful floor. Look at the mirrors <laughs> being put on the wrong way. Our limited budget, I pretty much have to do from the plumbing to the everything, basically. Oh. It's all the little bits that are obviously not being picked up on the, the problem, and there's quite a lot of them. That's going to drive me 
Kakaliin na. <laughs> and it's a similar story in the other rooms. God, well, things are getting worse and worse. That radio is probably vintage. Look at this. I thought the chair in my room was bad, and this is a lot worse. There's no lampshade on the light, and no wonder it's so hot in here. There's no dials on the radiator, so even if I wanted to, I couldn't possibly turn it down. <gasps> oh, my God, that's the worst carpet I've ever seen. So far, Alex has uncovered a mountain of unfinished jobs and outdated rooms, leaving her in little doubt of the challenge ahead. Every room, every bathroom, has something really wrong with it, and it's a mammoth task to fix everything here. They've been here 20 years. When are they going to get round to doing it? Can Alex work miracles with the Madonna? Ten weeks ago, I told you about this. You're not able just to take it to that level that we need it to be taken to. With respect to that, I'm in charge. It's just madness. The Crown Inn has ten ensuite rooms, with prices ranging from 30 to 60 pounds per night. And each room comes complete with all right. mod cons. Uh, tea making facilities, your TV, and then there's a telephone and there's an emergency. And somewhere there's a brochure that gives you some information about the hotel. Okay, okay then. All right, darling. Thank, thank you, you so much. Okay then. See you later. If you need anything, give me a shout. All right, I will. Thank you. <sighs> well, this is a supremely depressing room, mainly because there is not one attractive element to it. The headboard's ugly, the lamp's on a doily for some reason, this horrible floral bedding. I mean, I haven't seen a TV like that in 30 years. I didn't know they even still existed. Um, the neck curtains don't go all the way down to the bottom of the windowsill. Ah, oh, I just... I feel the opposite to cheered. The bathroom provides another decorative horror. Someone has spent a lot of time and energy thinking of this as a kind of decorative metaphor for the hotel. <laughs> Downstairs, a nervous Rita worries about Alex's first impressions. Oh, I think it went OK. It's not one of our best rooms, really. We're a bit mix and match with stuff, but she'll pick that up, I'm sure. She needs to look at, you know, the good, the bad and the ugly. Things don't improve much next door. Well, there's not much more to say here, is there? The decorative touch, which is the towels on the bed. And, of course, I'm expecting now to find this everywhere I go. Ta-da! The wedding dress shower curtain. And the triple room tells an even worse story. Look at this! Look at this. I mean, I have to say, it's as if someone put a lot of thought and effort into making this one of the ugliest rooms I've ever seen. What shape is this that the towels are folded into? Is it a tromboid or a... An... <laughs> I have been around a lot of budget hotels, and this is the worst put together that I've ever had a misfortune to go to. I would pay £40 not to have to sleep in this room, I have to say. Even the bears look unhappy. Alex feels Rita's been hiding from the Crown's problems too long. If she wants to start making money, she's going to have to make the hotel more attractive to guests, starting with the underwhelming welcome. There is nothing pretty about this entrance. Right. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It somehow makes your heart sink a little bit. You're like, oh, gosh, well, here yeah. I am, you know? Mm. Next, the reception. Right, well, the first thing I'd like to point out is this area is not immaculately clean. Mm. I mean, there's a great big cobweb up there that's clearly been there a little while. 
It doesn't feel very professional. Mm -hmm. You have 30 seconds to convince them that this is a nice place to stay, and believe you me, this, this area isn't doing it. Even when the guests get past the untidy reception, the experience doesn't improve in the bar and snug area. The very first thing, darling, is it's so dark. This, I think, should be the, the heart of the whole place, mm. and it isn't. It feels like a little cave in here. <laughs> um, I'd also like to point out to you, look, darling, you've got bare light bulbs over there with two non-matching light bulbs. Mm. So you've got little lampshades on these, bare light bulbs over there. That's just unnecessary. Mm. You want the winds of change to blow through here, darling. Finally, the bedrooms. So, Rita, what do you think of this room? I'm, I'm starting to get the gist <laughs> now of this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> neck curtains. Yeah. 80s headboard. Ah. Ooh, well spotted. That was right. high on my list. Right. Yeah. Uh, the bed linen. The only decorative thing in the whole room, really, is the shower curtain. <laughs> Do you like those? No. Oh. Because <laughs> <laughs> I... I b <laughs> now, I did buy those. I will take the blame for that. <laughs> and they cost me £50 each. Yeah. I bought, I bought ten when I first bought the place. Alex's words seem to have hit Rita hard. I don't feel like I don't know what I'm doing. And it's really made me feel a little bit like that, that maybe I didn't talk to even me in this kind of line of work, because I don't know what I'm doing. I can't, you can't even get the basics right. Bodkin House has 11 ensuite rooms, priced from £70 per night, all with a literary theme. Alex has been allocated the one named after the author of Little Women. Louisa May Alcott. I mean, there is not even an attempt. There's not even a book in here by her. This is not a themed room. This is a named room, which is very different. It's clear that at the Bodkin, you can't judge a book by its cover. I'm very disappointed. I expected something much more country from the outside, and I'm sure that everyone feels like that. You know, OK, there's a leather chair. That is the only nod to the countryside. We like a contrast between a lovely old building, refurbished so it has all the modern amenities. That reflects our personal taste, and we feel it would attract like-minded people. And quite frankly, it's how we would decorate our own home. I mean, it is rarely that I've ever seen an uglier bed. I can't stand the bed. I can't stand the bedside lights. I can't believe there's that wall light there with an energy-saving light bulb sticking out of the top. I'd like to take down these stupid little pictures. <laughs> you know, some vague Victorian woman. Yup, a bit better. We have the prison hangers, of course. And when this little woman explores the little girl's room... Gosh, I haven't seen a scallop sink in many a year. And actually looking up close, the cleaning leaves quite a lot to be desired. Look at this shelf. And, and look at how dusty that is. So either it hasn't been used in ages or their cleaning routines are crap. Alex also finds the room dedicated to Jane Eyre's author is nothing to write home about. If you're going to bother to call a room after Charlotte Bronte, surely you can do better than a couple of dog-eared paperbacks. Ah, that's really dirty. And there's just no excuse for it. I tell every hotelier I ever meet that cleanliness is a basic. The whole room, the more I look, the more ill-conceived everything is. This place should have been all cosy, and it should be like the kind of place you turn up at the country and you think, oh, this is my dream, to run and own something like this. All the characters have been taken out of it. It's amazing. We think it should reflect the personalities and the tastes of the owners. Now, 
I and I are arguing all the time about what that should be, but what we don't want this place to be is a traditional coaching inn with hunting horns and all the rest of it around it. It's not us. These days, everyone is looking for the genuine article, and this property just can't decide what it wants to be.